Cool Hand Podcast, something you got to deal with. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host. My name is Q. Now, uh, we got a special guest in the building, another interview. This is somebody who uh, is like a mutual on Instagram, and I check out his Instagram stories. I ain't never seen his face before, no, for real. I, but um, I saw this brother, and he's like sewing, putting together tote bags, putting together pants. And I'm like, dog, I can, can we chop it up on a podcast? He agreed to it. Guess, can you please introduce yourself? What's going on? I'm Yank. You can find me at Camcorder Films on Instagram. Yeah, no, 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 no periods, no underscores. That was a clutch finding that finding that handle. I thought it would have been took by the time I tried to make it. Yeah, Camcorder Not- Films, y'all follow me. That's a good that's a good name. And we'll have we'll have your name up on the screen for uh, for everybody to go follow you now. uh, Yank, uh, shout out to you because you seem multifaceted. You seem like you you got a lot going on on the creative side. But before we get into that, um, let's just get to know you a little bit. Uh, Where are you from? Uh, Born and raised, that type of thing. Um, Born in Miami, Florida. I've always lived here. Um, damn, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting beat up by my dog real quick. Hold on. <laughs> I'm born and raised in Miami, Florida. Well, I was born there. I was raised in like Tampa area, and then we moved down to Riverview when I was twelve. And we've been there ever since. Yeah, we've been holding it down over here. But right. yeah, that's that's the background. That's it. So, what was life like growing up? You know, down down south in Florida, Tampa, Miami. What, what's life like down there for us Northerners who don't know no better? Hot and hot. It's it's always feel sticky outside. It's nasty. Um, they like people think Florida is like a good vacation spot. It is for sure. For like two weeks after that. Ooh, excuse me. After that, that heat start to get you, man. Every day. Every like sun, sunshine is cool. Sunshine is nice. You wake up every day in the sunny outside, start going crazy. But um, it's nice though. It's nice though. No seasons, no seasons. But when it gets around winter time, like that 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 temperature drop, everybody seems to be happy. Like right now, everybody seems to be happy. Like you could do like you could swerve somebody in traffic and they'll just smile at you and wave. You know? So it's it's pretty cool, but. The culture wise, we don't really got southern culture like that. You know, like the real southern states got southern hospitality and stuff like that. Yeah. Like you walk down the street and somebody be like, "Hey, what's up?" We don't got that. So it's um because there's a whole bunch of immigrants and stuff like that. So kind of lost it a little bit. But other than that, it's a cool it's a cool place to live for a little bit. Not for us, <laughs> for a little bit. Do you plan on moving? It seems like you're gonna move eventually. Yeah, I want to. I want to move. I don't think this is a. I don't think this is a forever state. But it's a great place to raise a family. If I would like to retire and come back, it's definitely be the place to be. But no, I want to. I want to. I want to travel around, see see where the world takes me. I got you. I got you. Um, I understand about the whole being too hot. Now, I used to live in Georgia for a good six, seven years. Um, it ain't no Florida, but I know it's, you know, still down South, but in the summer, and this is before I had a car, before I had a license, I was a little youngin who had to ride the bus and walk everywhere. It was rough. So yeah, once our AC, once our AC stopped working, that's a, that's a, that's a <laughs> day, that's a, day in and day out, you know, drenched in sweat ain't, ain't it? So <clears throat> What type? What type of kid were you? Were you like, you know, outside playing sports? Were you an artistic kid, quiet kid? Um, I was definitely outside when I was a kid. I was like running around, you know, wreaking havoc, you know. Um, but I was I was like a silent kid though. Like when I was a little baby, I didn't really cry like that or nothing like that. I was just an observer. When I got older, I was definitely an outside kid. It's weird to see like these kids now. Like you, you like you drive through a neighborhood. Like if you out in service and you drive through a neighborhood on, like a Saturday morning, no kids outside. That's mm-hmm. so. That's so weird. But I guess it's the times. I guess it's the times. Times is different. I was out my kid. What about you, man? What you man? How was you when you was a kid? You was wreaking havoc? Throwing rocks at people's windows? No, I wasn't wreaking no havoc. <laughs> I was a I was a model child. I think uh once I hit like once I hit like fifth grade, I don't know. It was downhill from there. 
And I before mean, that, though, they was like, you got to be like him. Like, all, all yeah. the sisters in the congregation were hyping you up? Yeah, I, I've been on a steady decline since, like, 10 or 11. <laughs> steady decline. Uh, <laughs> still declining, bro? I'm st- still declining. Don't uh, let you the don't looks fool you. Yeah, don't let the smile and face. But anyway, um, so <clears throat> with the name Cam Quarter, Quarter Films, excuse me, um, at what point did you start to, like, explore your creativity, um, whether you were, like, you know, 10, 11 to your teen years or even now? Um, where did your creativity come from and what all do you do? Uh my dad's creative like i don't really remember it but when i was like maybe like four he would he he was taking like architect classes he used to be an architect but then he stopped for a little bit because of the market crash and stuff and he went into nursing but i remember that little piece of him being creative and like it was a strong it must have been a strong gene because my oldest sister's like she knows how to draw too so like it wasn't it wasn't a strong trait in the family, but I saw little pieces of it when I was little, and then as I started growing up, I tried to make a clothing brand. I was like, man, it's about to be. It was in COVID. I was like, bro, I gotta stack bread somehow. I'm in the crib. I don't got nothing to do. So I was 17. I'm like, I gotta stack bread. How do I stack bread legally? I'm like, man, I'm trying to be a good boy. So I got a job. I stake and shake terrible choice fast food whoever whoever works in fast food props to you because that is horrible it's horrible man it was paying me minimum wage 825 an hour standing up terrible and i started bread i got 1k and i quit and i said all right I, what i'm gonna flip this 1k buy the heat press about all the stuff i needed about t-shirts blanks and I, and I made a brand called 10k fabrics I, I was I was scamming folks. I was selling them shirts for like twenty five dollars. Probably <laughs> cost me like four dollars to make. And I was like, ah oh, man, I, I got this. I got this. Went on a went on a decline. Wasn't selling nothing. I was like, man, what what am I gonna do? I need this hustle. Mm-hmm. So I took a break for a little bit. Um, went into college. I grad. I mean, I graduated high school. I started going to college. Uh, I started skating. <clears throat> that's what really that's what really got me into creativity. At first I was wearing them skinny jeans, had crazy, terrible fits. But <laughs> once you what you can't wear no skinny jeans when you freaking when you skateboarding and stuff. So that community taught me a lot. It taught me patience and it taught me like everything is in your head. Cause when you skating, like any mess up, that's all mental. Like like you could be you could be unfamiliar on the board, but everything is mental. So, like, it told me some core values. I was around, like, a whole bunch of cool kids. Not, like, not like crazy cool kids, but, mm-hmm. like, cool in the sense of unfamiliarity to what I was used to. It was real cool, and they taught me some good life lessons. And after that, I got into the fashion thing a little bit. I bought my first pair of baggy jeans, and I was like, I don't think I can go back. I don't think I can go back. That's just crazy. Ever since then, I've been on that wave. And then you know once you once you get into skating, like certain people gonna be like, "Yo, record record my record my um record my trick real quick." And I was doing it on my phone, but it felt kind of weird. So I was like, "Man, I got to be authentic. I got to get a camcorder." So I, uh, I looked on. At first, I was looking on like Facebook Marketplace. Through, I was looking through it, couldn't find none. I was like, "Okay." Let me look on let me look on Amazon real quick and see like if they got some old ones for like refurbished. I got one. I was so happy, bro. I was like, oh man, I got kill I'm I'm real, I'm real. I started making low vids, sucked, bro. Wait, 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 I'm lying, I'm lying. The first camcorder I got was this 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 humble beginnings, man. This humble beginnings. This is the first camcorder I ever okay. got. <laughs> this, is first, this is the first camcorder I ever got, bro. You got to okay. start from somewhere, bro. This Thanks. little, this little, this little baby camcorder, right? And we had like a big friend group in 2021. After I graduated, we formed a fan group, and we got this to like record just the the vibes. It was after COVID, so everybody was like, "Oh, we gotta make memories. We gotta make memories." Mm-hmm. So I got this. 
I was like, oh man, we raw, we out here. I made a little vid. I know what I was doing. This audio was trash. I was like, oh man, I can't, I can't do this. And I was gonna pull it with a skate park with it. I was like, oh man, I'm gonna get cooked. I can't do that. So then I retired this one, <clears throat> and I was researching like, what's the best, what's the best camcorder brand, all this, and I I settled on this little Sony camcorder. This was the, this was the vibe for a little minute. I used this. I made I made some good vids off of it. Good memories, man. I look back in the dunks. I be tearing up a little bit. Man. <laughs> but <clears throat> I used that, and then. And then it broke. I was heartbroken. All right, I really had I didn't really had that much bread, so I was like, "Oh man!" So I just let it sit for a little bit, and then now I got this one. This one real sturdy. It ain't never gonna break. It's got like it can look like a regular camera, but it's got a vintage uh, setting to it. So I use that one. But yeah, man. Uh, I don't take it too serious though. Like this ain't my life. Yeah, I got you. It, it's just a little side hustle, a little hobby. Yeah, it's it's creative. That was that was a loaded sentiment. So <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back to, I want to go back to the um the clothing line during COVID. So because I want to learn about. So what what did you get? You stacked up one k. Props to you because you said you were seventeen. I was seventeen. I was hustling, man. Real rap, because and this is I, I respect this. Hold on, I respect this. Because seventeen, I remember when I, I worked at a Kroger at seven or eighteen, and I started buying all the clothes my mom couldn't afford: clothes and shoes, oh, Air Max ninety five, Levi's, all that stuff, all that stuff that I can't even fit no more. But to stack that bread up at seventeen because you had a goal in mind, I can't do nothing but respect it, and you actually followed through with it. 100% respect. So, what did you get with that 1K? You said a heat press? Yeah, um, what did I get? <clears throat> I got a heat press. I got a printer for the for the for the for the for the for the scan for the the labels, the labels. I got a printer, I got a label printer. I got a scale so I can weigh out the packages. <clears throat> I got um I was making it official, bro. I got the uh, the tags that you put on the back of the shirt. Man, I said, I said, I'm so official, bro. But that ain't how you start a business, though. <laughs> that is not how you start. I bought in bulk, preparing to sell all of them. But excuse me. But I didn't even know. I didn't know what my niche was. I didn't know how much to charge it. I didn't know none of this. So I was like, man. I started off kind of bad, but I'm glad I did though, because now I got the wisdom. Because I want to drop stuff, but now I know like, now that I manufacture my own stuff, I can print, I can make on demand and stuff like that. So, but I'm glad I wasted that one K. I'll never see that one K again, man. I'm not making that back, <laughs> but <laughs> but I got it back in knowledge though, so I'm not I'm not too okay. Bad about it. That's what money. So, is. so overall, you ended up at a deficit when you, when the clothing brand or line was all said and done, whether it's temporarily or it pops back up. So uh, you said it costed, and, and this is how just stuff works in general. Like, you know, they make these Nikes and probably like a children's sweatshop and they're getting like, you know, five cents a day. And then they go over here and sell it for, you know, one fifty. So um, what, what was, how did you come up with your price point? Was it just like, I need to get this bread back 25 or did you say like, mm, you know, the quality, woo, 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 all this other stuff. How did you, you know, create the price point and all that other stuff? Cause you did say you put the tag on the back, you know, mm -hmm. that could be a selling point as, mm -hmm. as minor as it may seem. Um, so let me think back. I got some, not the cheapest blanks, but some cheap blanks. There was maybe like two fifty. The tags was about like, like twenty five. No, no, no. I was like fifty for for thirty five dollars or something like that. And then heat press was maybe one eighty. You know, I was I was scaling all this, and I was like, all right, like to make profit, I'd have to sell like fifty shirts, twenty five dollars. I got this. So I ain't even, but. 
but like nobody was paying for that because it was a cool design. It was a cool design. Had like a little mm-hmm. snake and a heart in the top, and then the back it said bruised but not broken, something like that. It was cool design, but it was kind of lame. And like anybody could have made that. <laughs> yeah. Anybody could made it. So I like I'm thinking back to it. I'm like, man, I didn't know what I was doing, bro. But like people, people bought it, but it was like only people I knew, and you know, like a couple of random people. But I felt like I wasn't really doing nothing because if it's only people you know who supporting you, they're not supporting you because I don't look good. They they just your homies. That's what homies are for. They're supposed to yeah. support you no matter what. But I wasn't satisfied with how it was going, so I was like. Let me take my L, uh, stop, stop spending my money on this. And then just focus on me, focus on what I want to do. And then if it comes back naturally, it comes back. But I took my L, uh, $25. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it is what it is sometimes. But the thing is, like you said, you got it back in knowledge. You got it back in wisdom, too. So, you know, you want to pop back up in the future and do some stuff you know what not to do and have mm-hmm. a better direction on, you know, where and how to go. But um, and that's interesting, too. Like I talked about this on the podcast, like getting somebody to buy into you, whether it's a view, somebody to listen to your music, buy your product. Like it's easy to like a post. It's easy to put some, uh, you know, three fire emojis under a post. Mm -hmm. But to get them off of like, you know, Instagram into buying a a shirt and putting it in their cart, paying for the shipping or whatever. Like it's, it's rough. It's hard. It's not an easy thing to do. So, um. I, I give I give yeah. credit and props to the people who create stuff and sell it sell it too because I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy. Yeah. There's a thousand there's a thousand podcasters out there. There's a thousand designers out there. Um, so yeah, yeah it, it's a it's it's a struggle. It's a hustle. It's a hustle for real, and you ain't gonna get it right first time. Huh? Facts. So you got into skateboarding. No more skinny jeans, big baggies only. <clears throat> and then the camcorder came in, hence the name camcorder films. So you you said you, you left off on I'm not taking it too seriously. It's it's just a hobby. But what is what is your style like of shooting? Is it mainly <clears throat> um skateboarding skating etc etc what do you like to film um when i first started i thought that's what i was gonna do i was like man i'm gonna keep it only skateboarding and stuff like that but then i realized like when i'm gonna get old one day the system don't end i'm gonna die right i might have kids i might not when i get old i want to be able to look back with like clarity of like what was going on so I was like, man, like I want to make these like, like, uh, like home, what's that called? Like home, um, home, like home. homemade video. What is it called? Yeah, home, home, home video, video type yeah, stuff. Home video is like type of vibe. So I just like took random vids and I was like, oh man, this is like beautiful. Like looking back, I was like, man, this is beautiful. <clears throat> so I was like thinking in the sense, like, I want to make a vid that, I could look back and like show my kids and like this is how your dad was back back in the day. Like, but I don't really take videos of myself. It's really the friend group. So I'm like, this is the friend group we used to. This is what we used to do. So first time I did it, I made a bid trash, terrible. Second time I did it, it was kind of dookie a little bit. Third time I put a I put a I put a song in the background. I edited it a little bit and, and I was like, whoa, this is really good. Like I could keep doing this. So I just kind of wanted to hone into that home videos type of vibe, like nostalgia. But it's kind of hard when you like, because the song really, the song really dictates if it's a hit or miss. So exploring my music taste, trying to make it reflect properly on the video and what I wanted to portray, stuff like that. But the home video vibe was what I was really looking forward to. Got you. So where can we when can we expect some new content because you're low key mysterious. Um, like I said, I, I didn't know what he looked like. This could be anybody <laughs> like posing to be camcorder quarter film. So um, when can, can we expect a new video um, in the near future, uh, distant future? 
I ain't really been hanging out with people like that. I've been, I've been like on my song grind. I've been trying to stack bread. And I've been just trying to focus on myself. And going out really, like, um, you know them like motivational videos you be find on Instagram and TikTok. They be like, man, you gotta dedicate like this amount of months to yourself. Like you miss out on them parties, you miss out on them functions, and it's real. Like, like that one day that you take off from not hanging out with your friends and you would stick to your grind. Like you can get a lot done. So I've just been focusing on that. So I ain't been hanging out to make content. But when you said um I could be anybody, I really wanted to I really didn't want it to focus on who I am or like I want to separate the content from me. Cause I didn't want it to be about me. I wanted to be about what I'm putting out, what I'm producing. So like I mean I put a couple of pics of myself out there. But I don't try to I don't try to like make it known like who I am because yeah, y'all not trying to. Y'all not supposed to focus on me. You're supposed to focus on what I'm putting out. I'm, 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 I'm looking after that man, Dirt. That man got it on lock. He, he got, <laughs> he got, he got, he got the, um, he got the recipe. But yeah, that's what I've been trying to do. So I don't know when content comes back. I got some old vids. Um, I got some people who, not New Year's resolutions, but they, they, we, like I have a bonfire every year, and we record what they want to change about themselves for the next year. And it's about to be 2024. And some of these folks ain't, they ain't meet their requirements. So I'm going to pull out, I'm going to pull out a video of that. So we're going to see what happens. All right. All right. Shout out to dirt as well, man. Shout out to dirt. So, um, <clears throat> let, let's talk about how you got into sewing, because this is, this is mainly what I, how I've been introduced to you, um, through Instagram is like okay, so this dude's over here like putting pants together, making, and it seems like f- my from my point of view, it seems like these things are being done in a short amount of time. Like I don't know if they're not. You got to let me know. But how did you end up getting into sewing? Because I feel like especially for a male, sewing is a lost is a lost art. I took a sewing class yeah. in second grade. I was in second grade in like two thousand two, two thousand three. So that was a very long time ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even know if they teach sewing anymore in school. So how did you, how did this come about? I didn't even know they taught sewing in school in general. But um, um, so back to 10K Fabrics, the old clothing brand. So I, from the funds I made, I bought my mom a sewing machine because she was always talking about, man, I want to sew, I want to do this. I was like, don't even worry about it. I got you. So I bought her a sewing machine. I was like, man, like you can sew, you can live your dreams now. She never used it. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> I was like, come on, bro. Like, that was, that was my last bread. So I was like, okay. So I sat in the corner collecting dust for a little bit. I was like, okay. What happened? Oh, me and this, like, there's this, there's this um, little group that be making fashion shows and stuff around here. And I'm like, okay, like, the fashion shows is cool. I don't got a good enough personal style that I can rock with the fashion shows, but I feel like I can make something. And I've always been making, like, I, I've been making rings. I've been making, like, like stone pendants like this. And I've been making just, like, random stuff. So I was like, and a lot of that stuff has taught me I can do whatever. You can do whatever you want. I'm a regular dude, bro. I ain't special. I still got responsibilities and stuff. But in my spare time, I allow time for me to do creative stuff, so have a creative outlet. So I'm like, okay, like a lot of that stuff is stopping me. I can do whatever I want to do. So I'm like, okay, how do I, how can I make clothes? And what's the clothes I want to make? Shirts is basic. Anybody can make a shirt. That's a waste of time. Pants though, pants is expensive. And you can't really like select how you want it to look or feel without it being like a little, little expensive on the, on the more expensive side. So I was like, okay, how do I make pants? I looked up some YouTube videos. And then, excuse me. And then they were like, then we're getting into the real details of it all. But this one dude, he was explaining to me, you need a pattern. I was like, okay, let me hit up Joanne. Screw it, went to Joanne's. They had the pants pattern. I was like, okay, I'm going to figure it out. Terrible process, man. Like, because these videos don't show you the step by step. And the pattern I, I bought is called Simplicity, but that jump was overcomplicated. So I was like, okay. So I bought the pattern, I'm cutting out the fabric, I'm doing it wrong still. So I had to break it down step by step. And each step, I watched a different video. 
like to make one pair of pants it took me like like maybe all together 18 hours wow i was depressed i was like man i can't do this jump but like my other hobbies have taught me like patience and you can do whatever you want to do so i was like okay get back to a hustle i posted on my instagram i posted like some whack behind pants i tried to make and i was like this jump look terrible but give me two months and i'm gonna be raw and I already put it out there. I'm a man of my word. So now I don't even want to do it. But the fact I put it out there, now I held myself to that. So I'm like, okay, I got to hustle. I got to hustle. So I started, I kept watching videos. And like, so a lot of people would be like, social media, like bringing people down and stuff. Like, but social media helped me a lot. Like, it, like if I was sitting on the bed, sitting in the crib, just scrolling through. And like, my TikTok is now like in the niche of sewing the junk because I've been watching all the videos. Now I'm like, I'm looking at TikTok and I see a song of it. I'm like, dang, I'm a loser, bro. <laughs> what am I doing on my bed? Like, I got I to get to the hustle. So I get up. I'm like, okay, let me cut out this rabbit. Let me figure it out. Now I got I got the gist of it. Now I know how to make pants. Now I just got to make it look how I want it to look. So I was doing that. I was hustling. And now I got the, now I got the fitting right. And. It's been up from there, man. I'm happy with I'm happy with how the journey has took me. Yeah, this this is this is crazy. You want to know why? Because sewing itself is a process to learn, and that I'm speaking from eight year old me. Like I'm speaking from an outdated point of view. Like it's just learning how to sew, how to. I'm gonna just say lace up the sewing machine with the mm-hmm. joint and doing all of this and that. So. How long has it been since you started sewing and making the pants along with it? Three months. Three months. Three it's months? Been, That's it? It's been three months. Oh yeah, he's a yeah, he's a hustler, y'all. Bro, I, I'll tell you, I I like for those three months, I stopped hanging out with people. I was like, okay, like I still got school, I still got work though, but I still got meetings. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, okay, in my spare time, like I have to find a way to keep doing this. Cause I want to be able to like in two years be like, oh shoot, yo, we going to a function. I don't got no fits right now, man. Let me make some pants real quick so I can look good. You feel me? Like I want to yeah. be to that level. I was like, okay, let's hustle. So I, I hustled. It's been, it, man. I'm telling you, bro. Once you start a project and that junk looks not how you want it to look, man, you, you, you want to throw that sewing machine out the window, man. Yeah. But <laughs> you just gotta keep along with it. So yeah, it's only been three months. Anybody can do it though. It's not it's not as hard as you think it is. It's it's very easy. It's just if you have somebody with you, that's way easier than watching videos and trying to figure it out yourself. But it's not hard at all. Anybody can do it for real. Gotcha. Yeah, so you say. But <laughs> so is that how you work nowadays? Because um, like you just said, having somebody with you, um, I would imagine it's hard making pants for yourself. Mm-hmm. Um what's what's that process like and you finding like okay for a 32 waist or a 34 waist or woo 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 like how do you i i I don't even know like walk me through the process if you can like for like for dummies on how you create um (laughs) pants um so the simplicity pattern you get it says your size range and then when you pull it out it's like it's like paper it's like real thin you can't use it but you cut out the size you want, put a bum boom, cut it out. Then I laid on some crafting paper and then I trace it and then I cut the fabric out to see how it fits. It's never gonna fit you how you want to how it says it fits. It might be a 34 by 36, it's not they line. It's 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 a little off. It's a little off. So then to really get a pants you want, like whatever size you are right now, imagine I was to make pants for you. So I buy a pattern. I'm like, okay, you say you're 34 by 36. I cut out 34 by 36. First one's not gonna fit you. I'm like, oh, I want, I want my hips changed. Um, my thighs are a little snug. So you send them back. And I'm like, okay, no, no, no. I do the same thing. It's not gonna fit you again. The third time will probably fit you a little bit better. So it's just like a hit or miss, hit or miss. And that's a lot of fabric. That's a lot of time. So it's a lot, but yeah, you go by the simplicity pattern. It gives you a, a little range, and then you just trial and error through it, and then you eventually get to what you want. And then off of that, you can sh- switch it up. Like I want some flare pants. I add a little, I add a little more space to the bottom. So I mean, off of one good pattern, you can make, you can make, you can make something. You can make something beautiful. 
Bet. So how long does it take to make you a pair of pants three months in? Now that you, you, you're starting to get your, you know, learning your way, how long does it take now on average? Um, like with no distractions, I could say it take me like three hours. Oh, that's not bad at all. Yeah, it's not bad. I just cut it out. I cut out the fabric. Then I sew. I, I mean, I cut out the fabric. It, this is the process. I cut out the fabric. I cut out all the pieces I need. Then I iron all the stuff. Because, man, the prep work is the hardest part. Sewing, not the hard. The prep work, you got to cut out all the patterns. You got to make sure it's all right there. Then you got to iron it all. Because ironing is like, 50% of sewing is just ironing. So you got to iron it all down. And then you sew it. And then there's this machine called like an overlock serger. So you that like really, there's like two lines and then like a needle that goes over both of those lines. So it's, it's snug. It's not going to rip apart. That's, that's what you really need for some pants. But like you can, you can do like other types of seams, but I use an overlock serger. My my homeboy, shout out, shout out uh Caleb Ebanks, man. He gave me that jump for free. It's it's like a thousand dollar machine, man. I was like, word. Hold on. He blessed yeah. me. <laughs> blessed me for real. But shout out um, to Caleb, man. Shout out to Caleb. Real. Everything happens for a reason, cause he gave me that machine like a year before I even started sewing. Mm. Like I that machine was collecting dust. And then like I start on the sewing journey and I'm like, okay, let me see what wait, wait, wait. He gave me that machine like a year ago. I'd even start sewing. When I started sewing, I started using only my sewing machine. And then I gave and then I gave the surgery he gave me to one of my friends. Cause I thought I wouldn't need it. Like, why do I need two sewing machines? But then she ended up moving and she left the sewing machine behind. I was like, oh, she's not using it no more. Let me get it back. So like first instance, he gave it to me for no reason. Second instance, it could have given I gave it to somebody else, but it ended up coming back to me. So I was like, oh man. Like, this is supposed to happen. I'm supposed to have this machine, mm-hmm. bro. And I've been using it every day. It's a blessing. Mm-hmm. Are you going to sell pants in the future? I think I'm going to start off with handbags, um, like tote okay. bags and stuff like that. Pants is time-consuming. And the amount of fabric it is is a lot. But I know people like tote bags and people like handbags. Like, yeah. tote bags and handbags I'm trying to make is going to be like, it's going to be like a traditional one, but it's going to be a little more industrial like it's gonna have like f- the fabric on the outside along with inner lining and then it's gonna have a pocket on the outside inside it's gonna have like a little i don't know what it's called it's like the little circle thing that's like on the like a button but like the click on button yeah I don't know what it's called. um so i'm gonna start with bags but they're gonna be like real high-end bags i don't know like gucci bag but it's, it's gonna it's, <laughs> it's gonna be something i'm gonna start off with that see how many can sell you know, make on demand. Whoever wants to buy it, cop it. And then off of that, I start to see who wants some pants. If, if it's you. a good amount of people, I'm going to give some away for free. Because, like, I'll be making some, but I ain't going to wear all of them. So I'm going to give it out for free. Um, excuse me. I'm going to give out some bags for free, too. Because I don't want to sell none that, excuse me, that, like, nobody really, like, can use. So I'm gonna give out some bags for free. See, like, give it like two weeks. Like, what do you what do you think about the bag? What could I change? What can I make better? Like, did it feel good? Was it light enough? Was it too heavy? And the pants, like, were you able to run in it? If you if you skate, did you skate? Did, when you fell, did it rip? Like all this stuff. Yeah. So really see if it's quality, then I'll then I'll throw it out there. But I don't want to throw nothing out there that's gonna be trash and be like, man. This jit yank scam me. I hate that dude. So yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't want only positive reviews. All right, so tote bags first. Um, and I saw you, you know, um, asking for some feedback. I gave none because I don't think I'm qualified. <laughs> uh, he, he, on Instagram the other day, like I just started getting like you know coughing a couple tote bags just mm-hmm. for you know ju- honestly just for the look to add yeah. something you know revamp my style woo woo but um i'm like I- i'm not qualified to give <laughs> critique on tote bags but um but yeah okay so okay you mentioned jewelry as well and did you allude to the piece on uh that you're currently wearing is something that you made 
Oh yeah, um, it's a, this little ugly one, but it's a star. Now I just made the star though, but essentially I just pick up a, a rock off the ground. It look cool. Oh man, it's a cool looking rock, right? Then mm-hmm. I, 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 I'm like, okay, what can I make this rock into? So I draw a little shape on it, and then I got a Dremel tool. I cut out, I cut out the rock into what I, what I want it to be. And I sand it down, and I go to Joanne's or like Michael's or something. I buy that little, little, um, little beads, and I put it all together. I'm like, okay, it's one of one. I'm I'm big on like one of one pieces, cause no hate on Sheen, Sheen real big right now. You ever walk into a convention and six sisters got the same dress on from Sheen, bro? <laughs> so I'm real big on like I'm real big on like one of one pieces. Like I try to make it myself, cause I know. Nobody else has made this before, and nobody else is like people could make it, but but nobody else has. It's gonna have the same exact stuff as me. I I made these rings too. These rings, Mm -hmm. not not all that, but they cool. They cool enough. So I'm cool with like one on one pieces that I know nobody else gonna have. So I got my own personal style going on with that. Yeah, you're uh you're special, dog. Uh, (laughs) because. Cause uh, I don't know too many people who just see rocks and pick them up and say, you know, this could be, you know what I mean? Like you, yeah. you, you're different, but in a good way, like in a creative mm-hmm. way. Like I think that's very interesting. Cause you know, I see a rock, I might kick it, even <laughs> if it looked cool. You yeah, know was, what I mean, it was weird to get into in the beginning. Cause like this gonna sound a little cringe, but nobody else was doing it. So when I was trying to get into it, I was looking on YouTube. Like if anybody else can is making stuff with Dremel tools, not really like, they'll make like wood carvings and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, that'll help me. So it was real trial and error looking on Amazon of like, what Dremel tool can you use for stones? What Dremel tool can you use for um, metal? And man, like with these, you can't mess up. If it breaks, your whole, those whole eight hours you just used to make something fell apart at your fingertips and now you're like oh my gosh i just saw my time so it was it was a it was a rough beginning very rough but i've gotten a lot i made a couple pendants so i'm i'm ready to sell those two in 2024 so yeah y'all be on y'all be on the wait okay so rings included or like necklace pieces that type stuff um yeah everything everything okay um pants tote bags rings necklaces everything because i don't really like gold like that i don't know like i like i got a gold chain but i don't like the color of gold like that and i wanted to be a more to, uh of the creative side with my style so i was like okay mm-hmm. let me make something that that I'll, i'll like more but i don't really wear this one like that i, I wear like a heart shape one but yeah i switched it up to that I switched it up to that i got yeah. you i appreciate it you know showing off the catalog so <laughs> exactly so check this out because uh, I need to know because you speak so nonchalant about these things as if everybody's doing it, and that's why I'm like you're <laughs> like you're not normal. Like you're you're doing stuff. You're really doing stuff that I don't. At least I don't know nobody mm-hmm. doing this stuff. So like, what is the process of making? Now you you mentioned eight hours. Like eight hours. That sounds crazy. But mm-hmm. um, so tell me about the process of making like something out of like straight from a stone that you found on the ground and then also like creating, you know, a piece of metal jewelry or something to put around your, you know, put on your fingers or something. Got you. So, uh, for the stone, I really found them in my yard. I was clutch. Cause like you can find them. They're like the decorative stones that people put around their yard and stuff to make it look good. But, uh, I found a cracked one. Well, let me bring back to the Dremel. Uh, my dad went to like an auction and uh, he got it like with the auction bins like you don't know what's inside of it so he just bought a whole bunch of stuff happened to be a Dremel tool inside opened it up I was like dang just like the, that's what they be, the dentist be using that's what it looked like so I was like uh, I looked at it I took a mental note and I kept up on my day then I looked at it again and I was like this is 2020 and yeah, this is 2020 we locked in the crib nothing to do Man, I'm starting to go crazy. I'm starting to go buck wild. So I'm like, I got to find something to do. So I'm looking at it, and I'm like, I think I can do something with this. So I look at it. I'm doing research. Like, people can, people are doing a whole lot of stuff with Dremel tools. 
not nothing I want to do. Wood carving is a that's a whole lot. Of, that's a whole nother monster. I'm trying to get into that. So I found a rock in my driveway, and I'm like, I can do something with this, and it had a little chip in it that showed like the inside of it. I was like, oh, this little rock. So I got a jumbo tool. I bought the stuff I needed from Amazon. So what you do, you you draw out what you want on the stone, and then you cut out like a rough a rough draft of it. It's gonna look real ugly. You got to trust the process. The rough draft looks terrible, but you're like, okay. So then you you go a little more precise, and then and then a little more precise, and a little more precise, and then until you you rough it down with some sanding. And then boom, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I want. It looks so good. First one I made, pretty terrible. Second one I made, I was like, okay, this looks good. And then with the with the rings, that's different, bro. Cause now you got I use uh hex nuts. The nuts the like the the lug nuts, hex nuts, I don't know what they yeah. call it. Hex nuts. I use them for rings, so I'll take I use this one for example. So this ring, I call it the, the doodle art ring. So for this ring, it was a hex nut, right? Then I just smoothed out the sides that was sticking out. And I drew the lines of how I wanted to. And I just, I just, I just, I just drilled it down. But that, that, um, the sparks be flying in your face. I don't got no welder mask. So I'm just like, oh my God, this is crazy. <laughs> so I'm doing the mad unsafe. Don't do this. Inhaling that junk is real bad for you, bro. But, um. I had to do what I had to do. I'm getting more professional with it now. Um, I'm looking at, I'm looking after my health because after I finished like after I finished with that hobby, I was looking up like all the side effects and they were like cancer, all this, oh, yeah. like lung infections. I was like, Whoa. so I was going a little crazy. I don't really care about my health like that. But now, if I go back into it, if I start selling them, I'm gonna buy me a little welder mask. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna get some N95s. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be real professional. But it's a process, it's a process. Uh, this probably took me, I took like two hour sessions. Like it'll take me like a week to do. So I do two hour sessions on Monday, two hour session on Thursday, two hour session on this. And then by the end of the week, I'm done. So this probably took me like seven hours to do. Now at once, not in one sitting, I don't got time for yeah. that. But seven hours to do, the rings. Rings take a little longer because metal is a little tougher to cut through. Um, Probably like, eight hours, eight and a half. So it's a process, but it's worth it. It's worth it. Cause when you look at it and you're like, man, this is nice. It's nice. Like I made this. It's different when you buy something, but when you make it and you're looking at it and you're like, it's not perfect, but like I have the pride of saying I made this. And like when somebody be like, oh, where'd you get that from? I'm like, yeah, I, I made it. I made it. I made it. I made it. So it's cool. It's cool. That's what's up. And like the degree of difficulty, you touched on it already. I'm glad you did. I was going to say, like, what is like the degree of difficulty on top of like the safety hazards of creating? Like, I don't know what like I seen a couple sparks flying on, on your story one day, <laughs> but I'm, I am i don't think I, like I think all you could see was your hands. Like, mm -hmm. what do you like, can you like lose a finger? Could you burn your like? I don't know. You know what what you guys do in in, in the process. Um, I definitely burn my fingers a lot because like the actual tool gets crazy. I done like my tools done overheated because. Hey man, I don't got all the bread in the world. You feel me? So I'm <laughs> I'm using a little tool that's not meant to be used for all this stuff. So it overheats a lot. But I've been playing. I've been playing Lowe's a little bit. I'm like Lowe's. What's going on with this tool? It keeps breaking on me. <laughs> so I go back in. And I return it. But yeah, it gets real hot. I burn my fingers all the time, especially on the metal, because the metal it be keeping the heat in there. So every time I touch it, I'm like, dang, ah, shoot. So I be burning my fingers a lot. But the, um, just the sparks flying in your face. But I wear a little safety goggles. I pull up. I pull up in the garage. Right. I got. I got a studio in the garage. Pull up in the garage. I got this little, I got this little hoodie, this little coat on. Got the hoodie and stuff. I zip it all the way up. That's my little protector, so the metal will go all over my skin. Now I got these little industrial pants. I put on. I put some socks on. Now I put this goggle on. I put this mask on. I'm, I'm safe in some regards. Mm -hmm. Uh, your, I now put some gloves on, but it's still hot. The garage itself is hot. Um, 
that's that's pretty much it though. I feel like I feel like the stuff I do not difficult. Um, anybody can do it. You just got to be able to like really dedicate your time to it. That's it. It's a real, it's a real time dedication. But it's like four hours. Set aside four hours a week. Mm-hmm. Every week, you can do whatever you want to do, man. I started doing archery. Random, random, <laughs> <laughs> real, real, real random. But I bought a, I wanted a bow and arrow for a minute, but I didn't have the money to get it. But now I'm a little grown, so I'm like, okay, let me, let me, let me spoil myself a little bit. Yeah. So I bought a bow and arrow. I've been shooting it. Like, I'm starting to hit the target now. You feel me? So I'm Don't like, you can, you can, <laughs> you can, you can just do whatever you want to as long as you, as long as you put your mind to it and you like, you don't give up when you suck because everything you do that's new, you going to suck at it bad, bro. And if nobody else around you is kind of doing the same thing as you, you're going to feel real bad about yourself because you're like, man, I suck at everything I do. This person, though, they just do regular stuff and they seem happy. Feel me? I'm, I'm, doing, I'm trying to do all this difficult stuff. Clearly, I'm bad at it. Now I feel bad about myself. But you just got to be able to pick yourself up, man. Keep on doing it, bro. So yeah, archery one of the one of the things I got to lock right now. It's it's, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. That is extremely random. But shout out to you. <laughs> Kudos okay. to you. You don't see no black people shooting no bows and arrows. So uh, I know my neighbors be thinking I'm crazy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's yeah, a one on one. Yeah, it's fun. Dude. All right, was we can wrap it up. Um, is there anything that I missed? Something a, a talent that I didn't? Because you the archery, I wouldn't have guessed that. Was there anything else that people may not know about Yank that Yank could do? Dude, I can do a front flip, man. I can do a front flip. I can do a front flip. <laughs> yeah, I went, I, went, I went to the gymnasium and I could do a front flip. So y'all, y'all wait for that. Y'all, wait. I, I dropped, I dropped the mid on the front flip, man. I was legendary. I've been wanting to do a front flip since I was little. Now, I did it. I dang near shut tears, man. I, <laughs> I waited all my time for this. But yeah. I Did somebody fall. teach you or you just like Oh yeah, yeah. Somebody taught me. I, I okay. couldn't I could never have done that without a teacher, but somebody taught me. So that was cool. But man, all I right. appreciate your time, bro. This hold up, cool. hold up. Why not a backflip though? When I was young, everybody wanted to do a backflip. So you never had a desire to do a backflip, just a front flip? So I did a backflip, right? On my mom's on my mom's bed. I landed on my neck. I started walking weird for a little bit. I said, I can't do this no more. <laughs> I can't do this. I got no more. you. I'm risking my life right now. Yeah, front flip. Front flip is nice and safe. You fall. Worst case scenario, you're falling your face. You feel a little embarrassed. You never do it again. So, but back flip, that's, that could be your life right there. So, I got you. I take it slow a little bit. Yeah, all it takes is one time to scare you straight. I got you. Yeah, exactly. But. All right, thank you, thank you for being on the show. Was uh, uh, any last words, any shout outs, any uh, any people you want to mention? This is the time. This is the time. Any people I want to mention? Uh, shout out, shout out, um, shout out, um, dang, what could Jay from Maria's Evening Post, bro? Is like not a lot of people doing any creative stuff around this area, but Jay from Maria's Evening Post, y'all go follow him, bro. He raw. He coming up. He gonna be at a. Uh, he he just doing his thing. He making vids. He making little short films and stuff like that. He been like he been a good inspiration to keep me going. He still got that light in his eyes from the creativity, man. So y'all go follow him. Y'all go follow uh, Dirt. He he doing his thing. Y'all go follow my girl at Kaja dot p Kaja p dot hair. She do hair Sarasota area. Y'all go y'all go book with her. Let me find out y'all not booking my my girl. I'm gonna get real mad at y'all. <laughs> um. Y'all go follow me at Camcord Films. That's all I got. All right, man. Shout out to all the people. Dirt, <laughs> Maria's Evening Post, hey, your girl, cool. I forget her name already, with all due respect. Hey, hey, you but gotta, if, you, if you in the Sarasota area, you got to check in. You got to get, you, you gotta get, get right done. with her, y'all. Get exactly, bro. All right, Camcorder Films, follow up. Yank, thank you for, uh, for telling me all about your creativity. I appreciate it. Thank you um, for having me, man. Of course, man. You're welcome back anytime. This is the Cool Hand Podcast, something you got to deal with. Easy.